Today I'll be interviewing uh, Dr. Cecilia Akirise Anim, CBEFRSA, FRCN. Dr. Anim trained as a midwife in Ghana before moving to the UK and qualifying as a nurse in Hull in 1977. She was president of the Royal College of Nursing, in which she had been active for more than 40 years, both as a steward and health and safety rep. She has served on the Ethics Committee and the Menopause Steering Group. Throughout her career, she has worked tire tirelessly supporting members in three central London NHS trusts as a staff side rep, working in partnership with other unions. Dr. Anim works as a clinical nurse specialist in sexual and reproductive health at the Margaret Pike Centre in London and specialises in family planning and aspects of women's health with special interest in the menopause. She received the RCN Certificate of Merit for Outstanding Service to Members in 2000, the Bevan Award for Health and Wellbeing 2013, United Nations Award for Women of Excellence in 2015, and was awarded an honorary doctorate of Doctor of Health in 2016 by the University of Bradford. In 2017, in Her Majesty's New Year's Honours List, this was awarded the Command of the British Empire in recognition of her role as a nurse, contributions to women's health and local community, and was also awarded an honorary doctorate by the University of Nottingham. She also received a fellowship of the Royal Society of Art. In 2018, she received an honorary doctorate from the University of Portsmouth and the Chairs Award for the Windrush Generation. In 2019, SIS received a lifetime, lifetime Achievement Award from the British Journal of Nursing. And earlier this year, she was awarded a fellowship of the Royal College of Nursing. Cecilia is also active in her local community, serving as the primary school chair of governors for over 15 years and remains a governor having stepped down as chair. She also serves as a member of the parochial church council, as well as the dinner synod. Welcome, Dr. Cecilia Anne. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we're interviewing you today because you will be attending the Care Talk conference campaigning for equality of healthcare for people with learning disabilities and autism, uh, which will be happening at the end of the month. So, anyone watching for more details about the conference program and how to register? Just look below this video. So let's start. You have just written a book and the title is Living in a Rainbow with Ruth. Why the title? Well, no two days in caring for Ruth since she was born was the same. There was something like a new challenge every day or every week or every month. So you wake up and you say, now, how is it going to be today? But, you know, it was exciting. It was rewarding because at the end of the day, you said, oh, we made it. We've managed to get her to feed. We've managed to get her this and that and the other. And her welfare was the most important. No two days are the same with Ruth. Yeah, so just give us some background. Um, tell us first what Ruth means to you and why you wrote the book so that people get a sense of uh, your story, your journey with Ruth. Ruth means a lot and she still means a lot to us. Because when she was born, she was not given much hope of surviving beyond a year. 
So there we were with a lovely little girl and we didn't know how long do we have to have her. So we decided that every moment of the day has to count. Every moment of the day has to be celebrated. And every moment of the day, we want to make her as comfortable as possible. Ruth was a light in our life, and she still is. She always lit up a room when she isn't, even when she wasn't speaking. Her presence illuminates the room. Her presence reduces your fear and anxiety because there she is, as if her hands are open, help me. What are you going to do to, for me today? So you were always looking for new ways of supporting and helping her and making her life worthwhile. And sometimes you need to fight to get what you want, especially for a child with learning disability. But we stood on faith to get what we want for us. So the fight was not our fight. It was a fight. Why was she here? We never understood. Haven't had children, and then she came along. But I think God wanted to do something with Ruth. Oh. And we'll talk more about how your faith helped you later in the interview. Yes. But I love how you described Ruth as a light in your life and how you celebrated taking one day at a time. But it must... I'm sure it was very challenging, as you've already uh, spoken, uh, alluded to. But how did caring for Ruth affect her siblings? At first, everything was concentrated on Ruth. And I think we lose a little bit of sight about actually your own welfare, the welfare of your husband, and how do I balance it? But at some point, we involve the children in the care of Ruth. And I remember very well when my uh, son, I was bathing Ruth and she was screaming. And Patrick said to me, mom, why don't you let her close the door and let her cry for a while, then we will come back. And I said, no, we can't do that. So you stay with her whilst I go and fetch one or two things. So she's, he stayed with Ruth. So we involved the children in the care. They were all part of a team. But as I said before, you, we lost a little bit of sight, too much concentration on Ruth, but we decided, come on, let's balance this. Everybody matters in this family. Oh, I love the word balance and how you uh, recalibrated. So first, you know, you probably put your needs and your husband's needs and the other siblings' needs um, behind. And then you thought balance is required. You know, if you're going to look after Ruth, all of your needs do also have to be met. Mm -hmm. And then you involved Ruth's siblings as well. So they felt involved in her care. Yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's so much we could, that you've, you've highlighted from your experiences that others can learn. Mm -hmm. um, but what support, because it couldn't have been easy. So you had your support within the family, but what other support did you get for caring for Ruth? We got, first of all, the support for, from family was immense. I got a lot of support from my church, especially one church warden actually adopted Ruth as a, a grandchild. So, you know, the support was there. Also, our local council at the beginning were very supportive. We had all the services on hand. Some you have to fight for, as mothers with children with special needs will know. Then it comes to education and you have to fight for that. But I think the most important thing I will say, anybody listening, never give up. Never say, oh, I can't go up with this anymore. Because if you do, you are letting your child down. So my, our determination was we were never going to let Ruth down. What your average normal child gets, Ruth will get it as well. So that was our battle. 
but we had a lot of support, a lot of support, but our determination kept us true because we were never going to give up. It took seven years to get some things, but we kept going. We kept going. Wow, seven years is a long time. What tenacity, <laughs> you know, the determination you needed exactly. just to ensure that Ruth's needs were met. And if she was entitled to the support, well, we're going to hold you to account. Yes. And you talked about it being a fight, not giving up. We're yes. ensuring that every, you know, bit of support that Ruth needs, yes. she gets. You've highlighted even outside the family, the church, the local council. Yes. Uh, well and done. Now, yeah. And also other agencies like IPSI, uh -huh. uh, it's an, a, a charitable organization that supports children with special needs, their families, such as you know, helping you to get the statement in and everything and what you need to do. So there was a lot of support, but you, know, you only have to say, Cecilia and Ben, ring these people and we were on the phone. And but if somebody you, was starting out though, how would they know where to get support from? I think with social services, nowadays, when Ruthie was born, we didn't have Google and all this internet lag. But now you only have to type in, in the internet, speak to your network, speak to your neighbors, the school gate. And I think another thing that helped me a lot was being a school governor. So I knew about the special education needs provision within the school and the hoops you have to pass through. So I was able to use that knowledge to support Ruth in order that I can also support other children and other mothers in my situation. Excellent. So the support is that people just need to do the research so they know yes. what they're entitled yes. to and yes. they can uh, apply yes. for it. Yeah, yes. fantastic. So how did you cope with the pressures of caring for a child with autism? There was, there were a lot of pressures, but as I have already alluded, the support from family and especially my husband, Ben, was immense. Honestly, without him, life would have been difficult. And sometimes when you have children with special needs within a family, some marriages break down because the pressure and the trauma becomes too much. But we didn't, because I have to balance my love for him, my love for the children, and then the love for Ruth was a, a three-way traffic that we carried on doing. One will ask, what about you? Provided I achieve something for Ruth, it will make me very happy. Also, my mother, who passed away recently, came down and stayed with us for one year to support us in caring for Ruth. Ruth didn't walk until she was almost five years, and you can imagine, but we went through all. Determination, commitment, and love overcame all the pressures. Oh, I love those qualities, determination, commitment, and love, mm -hmm. and, and ensuring that you were supported, because sometimes as a mom, you give, 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 and then you think, yes. oh, I'm now neglecting, you've neglected yourself, yes. but ensuring you had the support from your husband, but also looking after each other, especially your marriage union, as yes. well as support from your mother. So who else was a source of support, like friends outside the family? And what was their role? How did they help you? Well, friends outside the family will always phone and said, is there anything you want us to do for you? And if I have to go to hospital with Ruth, somebody will say, okay, I'll drive you there. Or I will come and stay with the siblings while she take Ruth to the hospital. And my neighbor upstairs, Mrs. Grant, was also very good because I have to take Marlin and Patrick to the primary school and pick them up in the, at three o'clock or half past three. So Mrs. Grant and Christopher took this chore. So they will pick Ruth up and bring, uh, sorry, they will pick the children up and bring them back in the evening. And the, this went on for about two years. So my neighbors were excellent. The church members were excellent and social services were very, very good to me, to us, because they knew we want to do it. 
we need your help. But it wasn't all plain sailing. There were times that we have to challenge them to the tribunal to get what we want for it. Wow. As you were describing all the support, the network you had around you, I just remembered this famous African pro proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. And sometimes this village is part of your family. Sure. Uh, sometimes the village are your neighbors and friends, and then you, the wider yes. village, professional services, yes. the support group. But it's also important to tap into it because sometimes we have that village, but yes. we don't even want to receive the support. We sometimes think, oh, I don't want to ask for the support and I don't want to receive and we just sold it on. But what I love is how you accepted, you reach for the, reached out for the support, but yeah. also received it. Yeah. If anyone's watching, you know, help is out there. There's yeah. no need to solder on by yourself. Yes. Receive support so you can continue to look after yourself yes. and nurture that village around you and your child. Yeah. Amazing. A few times you've spoken about the church, your faith. What, what part did your faith play in all of this? My faith played a lot in this because I think if you have faith, you know that you are not doing it on your own. The strength will come from somewhere. The support will come from somewhere. And all the support I was getting, I think God had a plan. He had a plan to ensure that our needs are met through professionals, neighbors, friends, my church and everything. And I'm not one to give up easily because I, I always say to myself, somebody brought Ruth here and that person knew she would be taken care of. So you got to do something about this, Lord. I can't do this on my own. And he answered all our prayers. But we stood firm in our faith. Even the battles we had in some areas of Rufus care. Sometimes you come back home and you say, oh my God, how are we going to go get through it? And the guardian angel was always there with the answers. With his hands outstretched to help us. My faith with Ruth grew stronger and stronger every day and it still is. The challenges continues, but when you look at her now, you say, it was worth it. And I will do it all over again. Oh, it, it was so worth it and it continues to be worth it. Yes. I, I love how you said you didn't do this alone and as such, you know, you believe God had a plan and still has the plan. And so you walk with God, depended on him. Yes. Uh, and you're not one to give up. So you keep asking and keep receiving. Yes. And as a result, it made the journey easier because you, you're not walking alone. Amazing. Well done. So if there's anyone in a similar situation, what advice would you give to them? My advice will be, Build on what is in front of you. Don't give up. Don't view it as a problem, but something that needs to be done. Balance the love of your family, your husband, your children with determination, commitment, and sharing the load, even with the siblings, and solving the problem. Everybody had a role to play in this. It's not just us, everybody had a role to play. So don't give up, carry on, there is always help. And if you can't get the help, find out where you can get it. There are a lot of organizations, a lot of charities, a lot of people with the knowledge and skills to help you. And remember, if you give up, you're not letting only yourself down, but your child that needed that help most. So don't give up. Oh, I love that. Don't give up. 
Uh, you talked about balance, how we balance all the needs of everyone within the household so nobody suffers. Uh, the commitment as well, because yes. it's, it's it's an ongoing journey. Yes. For sharing the load, there's no need, because sometimes we can be matters, we want to do everything. Yes. But share the load, because then when you do, it's easier to carry the load. Yes. You talked about love as well, you know, when 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 you show love, mm-hmm. you get you receive love. Mm. and everyone having a role to play so wonderful advice for anyone that may be going through a, a similar situation um that you're not alone just get the help reach out and receive it just ask and then you will receive moving forward though are there any lessons any challenges that you would love to share with those who watch your interview well uh, the, with Ruth, she started six now, and we still have to support her. She needs a one-to-one support, and she actually reaching a point where possibly she's asking, why me? Mm-hmm. Why can't I be out like anybody else? But she, because of the support and the love we have shown her, I think we have to carry on looking after Ruth for a time yet. But my only anxiety is what if I'm not here? Mm. What will happen? And I think that goes through the mind of everybody with a child with special needs or uh, having someone who depends on you. And we do even have this, this feeling with our siblings and our children who are your so-called able children? You, a parent have this anxiety. So that is what, what if I'm not here? So the next stage is to plan the way ahead for us. Yeah, thanks for sharing some of the fears, anxieties, because you think, you know, if I'm not here, what would happen to Ruth? Who would yes. look after Ruth? Yes. But he said, with every challenge, there is, there is uh, a solution and yeah. it's the planning ensuring that whatever happens, there is a plan in place for Ruth so she will be cared for. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Cecilia and him for sharing your story um, and all the wonderful advice what has helped you cope. And despite the challenges going forward, that we're not, you know, every, anyone in a similar situation, they're not without hope. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. And give my love to Ruth. I, I love Ruth because she we share a name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much.